You're listening to Wiretap with Jonathan Goldstein on CBC Radio 1 and Sirius Satellite Radio 137. Today's episode, Special Features. Helen, listen, I, I can't really talk. Can you call me back later? Where are you? I'm, I'm, I'm walking through the snow with, like, five grocery bags, and the phone's, like, pressed between my ear and my shoulder. Why don't you use the earphones? I have an old cell phone. It's, it, it doesn't have earphones. Why, why don't you call me back later? But you were supposed to listen to my essay I wrote. It's about you. Okay, Helen, listen, just read quickly, okay? I'm getting a hernia. Puppies versus Kittens by Helen Serena Pallet Weisel. How's that about me? It was inspired by you. Some people think that puppies are cuter than kittens. Other people think that kittens are cuter than puppies. I say, let's examine the facts. All right, Helen. First, let's look at their noses. Both of their noses are cute, but puppies have noses that are wetter. Let's wrap it up. Is having okay. a wet nose cuter? I'm not convinced. My grandmother's nose is wet when she has a cold, and there's nothing cute about that. The phone slipped. In fact, some might say it's disgusting. What about their breath? Helen. Both are pretty bad. Helen. One smells Helen. like cat food, the other like dog food. In conclusion, I'd like to say that both puppies and kittens are cuter than babies. Because what's so cute about screaming and wearing a diaper? Nothing. Wednesday. After an unfortunate accident involving my cell phone and a city bus... I've been forced to finally buy a new cell, an iPhone. And under my new phone plan, I receive what's called the Freedom Five. Five numbers I'm allowed to call any time of day or night, for free. After some deliberation, I choose my five and then phone my five to let them know that they are the chosen. First free number, Howard. I was just in the middle of staring out my window, he says. There's a squirrel across the street that's eating a giant frozen pine cone. He makes it look really good, like it's a corn dog. I hope you're not planning on eating tree garbage again, I say. Just think, he says, of how brave the first man who ever ate a chicken's egg had to be. If my life was a TV series, Howard would end up getting his own spin-off. It would be a pretty cheap show to produce, requiring only two sets a living room with a window, and a hospital waiting room. Second free number, Tony. The great thing about the iPhone, he says, is that you can read newspapers on it. So when you're off to use a public washroom, you don't have to announce the fact to the whole world by trundling off with a massive newspaper under your arm. You just put the iPhone in your breast pocket, and no one needs to know. Third free number, my father. When I call him up, he asks me if my new cell phone has a camera on it. He then instructs me to take a picture of it to email him. That's paradoxical, I say. And as I'm saying it, I imagine an iPhone app that, without the use of mirrors, can photograph itself. Call it the self-awareness app. I can just see it. A pivotal moment in the rise of the machine. An iPhone realizing that the pink protective case it's wearing makes it look fat. Free number number four, Mary Claude. Her 11-year-old daughter, Helen, picks up when I call. Apps are fun, she says. I downloaded one that turns your voice into text. A program, I say, that allows you to communicate in real time using nothing but your voice? Unbelievably, it's already been invented. Where can I get it? Helen asks. You already have it, I say. It's called a telephone. Free caller number five, Gregor. I use my new iPhone to email him about my new iPhone. The phone rings. It's Gregor. I just got an email from you with a signature at the bottom that reads, Sent from my iPhone. 
What do you painstakingly type that out every time you send an email from your Commodore Vic 20? Who are you trying to impress? I have an iPhone. I say the words feeling sad and desperate in my mouth. Gregor still does not believe me and thinks I may have confused my cordless telephone with a cell. It is unfortunate that, as of yet, there's no app that can turn your iPhone into a warm tablet to cup in your hands like a comforting mug of hot chocolate. Such an app would help soothe the feeling of having had your heart hogtied in banjo string by people like Gregor. Hello. Hey, how's your iPhone treating you, Johnny? Oh, so n- now you finally believe that I have an iPhone? Of course, I believe you. I always believe you. No, you didn't. Well, you're a liar. What kind of a thing is that to say? If you lie, you lie to me all the time. No, I don't. You do so. And besides, don't get all offended. You know, a lot of people would sneak around behind your back calling you a liar and plenty worse. Yeah. I say it right to your face because I respect you so much. I I appreciate that. Anyway, you get me all distracted. The point is, congratulation on your iPhone, and the next step is for you to get your own app. You you mean an application? Yes, it's called an abbreviation. A lot of people use them. It makes life move much less achingly, painfully slow. The point is, you should have your own app,、mm-hmm. the Johnny G Goldstein app. It's going to become a huge trend. What do you mean, like 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 something where like people can access an archive of my old radio shows or something? Nobody wants to access your old radio shows. I'm talking about like you know the T Pain app where you can sing like the rapper T Pain. You make your voice come out like T Pain. What What do you mean? You know, you sing like this. Johnny, you smell peculiar. Now you just turn on the auto tune button. You kinda smell like you have a cat, a cat with a bladder problem, a cat that should be put to sleep by the vet. Gregor, I don't need an app like that. Johnny, everything sounds better auto tuned. I'm not in the mood. I'm not in the mood. Gregor, I don't want to be auto tuned. Gregor, I don't want to be auto tuned. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Anyway, that's the T Pain app. That's not what we're going to do with you.、Mm-hmm. We're going to Goldsteinify you. Well, what does Goldsteinify mean? You speak into the phone, like, "My, isn't it a beautiful day out?" And then if I hit Goldsteinify, and you come out sounding like this: "My grandmother is dead." Greg, where did you get that? You you recorded that from my radio show. Not true. That's artificially synthesized through the Goldsteinifier app. Here, watch. I'll give you another one.、Mm-hmm. Hey, what's this? A surprise birthday cake on my desk? And we put it through the Goldsteinifier. I miss my grandmother. People make hundreds of millions of dollars on apps every minute. You were expecting for someone to pay for this stuff? That's just one of the functions on the app. This app does a lot of things.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's this? You take a photo of your friend, nice young athletic type person. Uh huh. You run it through the photo Goldsteinifier. I'm sure this is going to be really flattering. He looks 25 to 30 percent greasier. I I I I I. Why? There's even a travel app. Oh yeah. You get to travel just like Jonathan Goldstein. It'll say, "I'm scared and I want to go home" in 25 different languages. What? I I, I don't. Here's another function. It's got a Goldstein game, Angry、oh. Goldsteins. You know how this one works? No. It's just your head and you fling it at a brick wall. It's very satisfying. There's like a melon smash sound effect when it hits. It's a lot of fun. It sounds like no fun. No one would want an app like that. Hear me out. You haven't even heard the best part yet. We put a GPS chip in you. Through the app, it geolocates you. All your fans can dial in on their smartphone and find where Johnny G is. Why would I want strangers to be able to locate me at all times? Let's just say you're walking down the street. Pumsy John is about to fall down a manhole. Who's going to push him out of the way at the last second? Why a crazy mob of fans? Of course. It's like having a guardian angel, a crazy obsessive pack of guardian angels stalking you.、Mm-hmm. Okay, I get the idea. What about this? You're on a boogie board. It gets swept out to sea. Nobody knows if you're alive or dead. How are we going to pull out your gold fillings and make them into some gold for cash? We put on the gold steener. We say, "Oh, he's at the bottom of the ocean. He's right there." We'll just go out with a ship and a bucket and scoop him up, and we're all done. No muss, no fuss. Okay, Gregor, let's just stop talking about this. Okay, you're not putting any chips in me. All right. Well, too late for that, my friend. What does that mean? Do me a favor, right? Take your right hand and put it up behind your left ear, about an inch below your ear. You feel a little lump. What did you do to me? You want to know where you are right now? Because I can look it up. I'm accurate to within a meter. What are you talking? Well, I don't need you to tell me where I am. I'm, I'm, I am where I am. You am where you am. What are you, Popeye the Sailor Man? I thought you had a master's degree in English. Gregor, this isn't a joke. You, you, you violated me. What do you think? It's the first chip I put in you. Get out of here. It's not going to be the last either, my friend. When did you put a chip in me? When you were sleeping, with a blow dart. Remember that time you thought you were being stung by bees because I released a bunch of bees in your apartment?、Mm-hmm. That was dazzle camouflage, my friend. Anyway, you should be happy. I left off the feature where on Valentine's Day people can shock you through that chip I implanted in your neck. Well, what, what, what does that have to do with Valentine's Day? It's a day of love. 
people love to give you shocks. That's a terrible idea. That's a terrible idea. Keep talking. You sound great. Gregor, stop auto-tuning me. Stop auto-tuning me. That's really immature. That's really immature. Gregor, I'm hanging up. Gregor, I am hanging up. I don't like this at all. I don't like this at all. Saturday, 12.30 p.m. I decide to swap the small screen of the iPhone for the big screen of the movies. I pick my father up to go see Tron. Normally, my father doesn't like leaving the house to see movies, preferring to read the book or wait for it to come to TV. But because Tron is in 3D, going out feels justified. The thing about 3D films, my father says as we drive along is that you get the best of both the movies and the theater. The action is right there in front of you, but you don't have to worry about having some actor come into the audience and make you dance with him in the aisle. Your mother goes for that sort of thing. Not for me. 4 p.m. I don't think I'll ever be able to watch another movie that isn't in 3D, my father says as we leave the theater. It's like you're not even in a movie theater at all. It's like you're in the real world. As we make our way down St. Catherine Street, talking, enjoying the last few minutes of sunlight, the real world all around us in all its three-dimensionality, it occurs to me that we might have done well to have foregone the movie altogether and just taken a walk. I share this thought with my father. We could have saved ourselves 15 bucks a piece too, he says, but in this weather... It would have been impossible to keep our popcorn warm. Johnny, since I left the movie, I can't stop wearing these 3D glasses. They're fantastic. Dad, first of all, are you, I, I don't even think you were supposed to have taken those those glasses from the movie theater. What are you talking about? Of course they're, they're there to be taken. Uh, Before are. you leave the theater, you cram them in your fanny pack. You don't leave them there. They're disposable. Everybody can get no, them. No, I, I don't think those were disposable. Who else is going to wear it? Somebody could have an eye disease. Uh-huh. I'm doing them a favor. I'm I'm trying to keep the uh, the spread of bacteria down. Okay. Then I don't I don't know that they're good for your eyes. They're great for my eyes. I walk with them and I watch TV with it. Mm-hmm. Everywhere I go, I use them. I look good in them. It may everything seems 3D. Yeah, but that everything is 3D. It's it's more 3D. And how does mom feel about these glasses? Dina, what do you think of the glasses? You look ridiculous and nonsensical. She thinks I'm nuts. Look, they enhance my reality. Even sleeps in them. Who knows? I could dream in 3D. You're going to drive me to the nut house with the 3D. Hey. I want those glasses. Yeah. Give me those now. Give me those back. Them. Hey. You look like a human fly. You look like Roy Orbison. I'm not going to put up with this. Johnny. Yeah. You didn't save you up here, did you? No, Dad. I, I, I left mine there. Oh. Well... Back to reality. Howard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, uh, what, what brings you to my studio today? What does bring me to your studio, John? You, uh, you look like you've been working out. Really? You actually smell like you've been working out. But do I look a little more buff? How about my pecs? I mean, I just, I just got a little bit doughy. I'm just trying to get, get myself back. Please don't unzip your tracksuit. Wait, you see, the, zip that up, please. And check, zip out, check, that out, back. check out the pythons. Looking how about good, the glutes? How about my glutes? Okay, Harry, that's enough. Just, that, that's fine. I'm working, doing a lot of squatting. I didn't know that you had joined a gym. I, I don't belong to a gym. Craigslist has been a wonderful resource for me. How does Craigslist come into play with this? Oh, I just basically look for ads, you know, people trying to sell equipment, right. treadmills. So I go and I, you know, to their apartments, get a good, good, solid workout in, you know, 
It's free. Wait, what are you what are you saying? You work out in strangers' homes. I bring water and I have my towels and I bring soap and my flip flops. Do you shower there? Well, I'm sweating like a pig afterwards. I can do a good forty five minutes on the elliptical machine. Hang on a second. So you have no intention of buying these machines? No, none whatsoever. And that's it. So basically, I get a workout. I spread joy. Everybody's happy. They had a they had a squat rack, which is good. So I did some squat. That's how I've been working on the glutes. I've been trying. Okay, to do. all right, that's fine, Howard. I don't <laughs> want to see that. Give me your hand. I'm not get Just off my hand. I'm not. It's like a Howard, dimple. What brings you by the studio? It's funny you ask. You mind if I sit down? Can I sit on that chair? Just gotta rest my glutes. What do you do for your glutes? I don't do anything, Howard. I sit on them and I, I try not to think about them. That's why they're flat like frying pans. What are you talking about? See, I mean, I can just tell just from, from looking at your tuchas. I don't want you looking at my tuchas. That is, that is the butt of someone who's been sitting all day. I think that's why, secretly, you keep your wallet in your back pocket because you're trying to fill it out. And that's why that's why you're so tight with the buck because you're afraid if you pull your wallet out, then the whole charade's going to come crashing down because okay. then everyone's going to see that John Goldstein has no butt. Howard, what are you doing here? All right, you know how when you're watching a DVD... There's often a director's commentary. A special feature that they yeah, have, the right, feature. where you get a little bit of background information. Exactly. You know, we don't, when was this shot? You know, where did this joke come from? What were the writers thinking of here? Right. So I've decided to surprise you uh-huh. in doing my own director's commentary of some of my very favorite episodes of Wiretap. And Wait, okay, first of all, director's com. Mm-hmm. You're not the director of Wiretap. No, what are you no, talking no, about? No, you're right, but... Being who I am, Howard Chakowitz, uh, I feel I have maybe the story behind the story that I can contribute but okay, more. But Howard, and most importantly, mm. DVD commentaries are on movies. Right. This, this is a radio show. Yeah, I think if we just take a listen, I think you'll hear that the thing flows really well. You've brought some of these. Uh, oh, yeah. I have, I have some real insights into your craft, into who you are as a person. Maybe after you're dead. People are going to be rummaging through papers and waste baskets trying to find all the dirt. It's all here. You've taken the liberty of uh, well of supplying I, them with the dirt so they I, don't have to get their hands dirty. For the majority of your life, I've been a veritable fly on the wall, you can say. Right. Fly in the garbage truck uh, of your life. That's beautiful. Well, it is a big, stinking, heaping mound of moving garbage, your life. Okay. Unfortunately, you don't have two men riding the back, okay. crunching that trunk. That's really? Live here on an audio cassette right here. It's what I feel is the finest cut of my work, criticizing your work. Let's just put it in in, in the uh, – where is it? you don't have a cassette deck here? Who uses cassettes anymore? Uh, who uses cassettes? Look, I'll go to my, to my gym bag right here. Look. See that? That's a, that's a Sony Walkman. It's, it's the size of a shoebox, Howard. You can get a workout just, just lifting that thing Because out. this is just like having a full sound system. And when I'm at people's houses and I'm trying on equipment – I put it on, and I don't need to hear, excuse me, sir, we have to get my kid to school, sir. My wife's water okay. broke. Okay, all right. Here, I have a tape player right over here. Hang on a second. You're listening to Wiretap with Jonathan Gold. I, I have some crazy anecdotes about on her as well. I think, remember we used to date? Hey, with Brenda? Bernice. 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 Today's episode, A Grandmother's Kisses. My grandmother died on Saturday. Oh, this is the episode I that I devoted uh, to a monologue ab- about my grandmother yeah. and her, her, her life and her death. One of my favorite segments. Lipcha Ruchel Samirla Goldstein was the seventh daughter born to a poor Lithuanian fishmonger couple. Her first words were tuna and gefilte. Fish of all sorts remained a passion for her all of her life. The fish. Hi there. Life. I'm Howard Chakowitz. Welcome to the director's commentary on this episode of Wiretap. Uh, this is one where Jonathan was talking about his grandmother, and um, she's dead. You know, uh, like all the Goldstein women, buxom, bosomy. Bosomy. Yeah. My, grand, my dead grandmother. John, you can't appreciate it because it's family, but you know, your grandmother was a very attractive what woman. What is wrong with you? P- push play. Let, let, let's get back okay, to this one. Okay, all right. Grandmother, where are you now? No longer a child, I still yearn for the comfort and warmth of your lap. Now, I'd like to take a few moments here to talk about the more technical aspects. Now, Jonathan, when he's recording, he finds clothing restricting. And he'll often strip down and create everything you hear completely in his birthday suit. The night before you died, you... How is this commentary? It's not even true. Just forward a bit more. 
Her favorite TV show was Lawrence Welk. And I remember his grandmother had different old country cures for his bedwetting. She tried to put a lobster in the bed, scalding water. What are you talking about? You wet the bed. No, I didn't. What do you care? That's how Hollywood works. They make up all these scandals, drug scandals, violence scandals. Aaron, I don't want to hear this anymore. Well, I, w- I want to get to the good part where I honor you. All right. Let's fast forward beyond that. Sabbath candles illuminate. Certainly, events like prom night were very difficult. What with plastic pants. Still with the bedwetting. It's only because there, there was. I was just let it fast forward a bit more. So, so how's your day going? Howard, let's just get this over with, all right? I, I just want you to just okay, just just make press this play. Push play. It has me baffled is how much could one man wet one bed? I mean, why even use a bed? Sleep in a bathtub at this point. Fast forward, fast forward. And here, I think we're, we're getting into headier territory. Yeah, this is the meteor stuff. Where in death do we hide? Where in death oh, I got so does hungry. love flow towards? To love. Oh, it's good to have. Was attracted mm. to his unusual oh, what's in the radio? An ability to touch mm. while reciting to him. Oh, I like to talk. Oh. And he liked the mm. Smoke, ham, and a This has nothing to do with nothing. So I didn't even realize I was even recording over that. I was really got really hungry that this floor passed out a bit. The day of her funeral saw the saddest, He's juggling like three balls at the same time. And the little clown, he's going between his legs. As though oh, all the, the circus, angels in heaven were weeping. And it was so much fun that we had such a great time there. Four. At the Shiva house, I ate eggplant blah, for the first time. Blah, blah, blah. Tuesday. Tuesday. No easier. Blah, blah. blah grandma dead. Fast forward, fast forward. Even though and then I you're flossing, and then all of a sudden, pardon, you're looking at the floss, and there's a piece of chicken, and you're like, chicken? <laughs> I don't remember any eating any chicken. When, I mean, Rose, where did that come from? So let me just end by saying oh. that this broadcast is dedicated okay, oh, we're coming to, the end now. to my grandmother. Um, well, thank you for Buddy, joining me. If you're up there listening, this is your grandson saying... I certainly hope you enjoy listening to this commentary as much as I enjoyed recording it. And just remember, um, they're easy to obtain... I'm often outside the CBC offices. I've always got a big postal bag On full of cassettes, day, ready to go. Hustling, bustling, never tussling. Always crumping, always got something. Come on down, come get some. The latest wiretap ringtone. I'll miss you, grandmother. Remember how much Jonathan Goldstein misses his grandmother with every ring of your phone. Howard, that that was just awful. You're gonna you're gonna sell these? I've already sold twenty. How, who did you sell these to? Wiretap fans. Oh, yeah. On, on the weekends, I put on a Superman outfit, walk around the parking lot with a sandwich board. Howard, I am not allowing you to sell these. Well, you can't stop me. You talked over an entire monologue Whoa, about the death of my grandmother. Don't bring your grandmother into this. This has nothing the, to do it with was, anything. The whole episode was about my grandmother. Was it? It was about bedwetting. Howard, look, I was doing a monologue, okay, that it had taken me months and months to write about my grandmother, nonetheless. And you think that it's a joke to sit yeah, there and listen Jonathan to it and, and eat Going the Going off another tangent. And, and, and that's your uh, way I feel it's practically my duty and now you're gonna uh, sell to soften the oral assault of Jonathan's droning can inflict upon the innocent Don't ceaselessly, uh, uh, amazingly, and shamelessly doing. unaware of himself. I know you're listening. I know you're listening. Usually melancholic life. you're doing right now On Wiretap Today, you heard Helen Pallet Wiesel, Gregor Ehrlich, Buzz and Dina Goldstein, and Howard Chakowitz. Wiretap is produced by Jonathan Goldstein, with Mira Bertwintonic and Crystal Duhame. Tune into Wiretap Saturdays at 1.30 and Thursday evenings at 11.30. You can also hear Wiretap across North America on Sirius Satellite Radio 137. Subscribe to the podcast through iTunes or at cbc.ca slash wiretap, where you can also download the latest wiretap ringtone. How about the glutes? I've been working on the glutes. What do you do for your glutes? Keep your cell in your back pocket and vibrate away that cellulite with every ring of your phone. For more on all of our CBC podcasts, head to cbc.ca slash podcasting.